Hello and welcome to lesson number 10 of the Introduction to Python course. This is our final lesson and in this we are going to address how you would use Python in a more general environment. Because it's all well and good writing Jupyter Notebooks and writing Python scripts in your favourite IDE like uh, PyCharm or Spyder, but at the end of the day you will quite often want to run code in, well, like in your terminal or as a scheduled program, which you can use you, uh, do using Windows Scheduler. And in those instances, it can't just hook the executor up to PyCharm or up to Visual Studio or whatever you're using. You need to be able to run the Python script itself, often with inputs to that Python script that need to come from the external environment. So this is what this lesson is about. We're going to look at how to do that and some of the simpler ways that you can build a Python command line interface, or CLI. First of all, we're going to be looking at the sys package. Sys is standing for system, and it's a built-in package that comes with Python. And we're just going to be printing out sys.arg values. These are the argument values that uh, come with the Python command. So at the bottom here, I have my PowerShell interpreter, and now I just need to run Python luminance.py, and you can see it's printing out the system arg values. And in this case, that is the luminance.py file name itself. So luminance.py is one of the arg values. What this means is the arg values are all of the space separated values that are provided to the Python command. So for example, if I was to do Python luminous.py one space, two space, three space, four, we will get back a list of strings and each element will be one of these things. The first one will be luminous.py, the second will be one, the third will be two, fourth will be three, and so on. And that's exactly what we see. So using this, we can build up some kind of command line interface because we can take input from the command line and pass it directly into our script. And so let's do that. Let's take everything that we've learned so far and build that into a script. So here we go, here's the first step. We have now a set of functions. We have the find data cross section function that I discussed in the function lesson where we constructed everything into functions. We have the calculate average luminance function and we have a function called main. This takes sys.argv of one. So remember the first element is always going to be the name of the file that you're running. So the second element will be whatever comes after that. So we're gonna say that should be the file name then, okay, let's have find the data cross section, calculate the average luminance, and print out the average luminance for that file. Very, very simple. So, let's save this, and let's run it. And let's try this for the simulation 01.txt. Right, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Well, if you look closely, you'll realize that we have three functions and we aren't calling any of them. They're all being defined. They aren't being called. Now, this is obviously a bit of an oversight, so we really need to go back and make sure we're calling the functions. However, it isn't actually as simple as adding this. I mean, this is true. If we just do this, we are now calling main and that will call the other functions and the code will work. So if I save this, you do Python luminance of pi, hey, we're getting the average luminance. However, you'll see this a lot in Python and it's considered best practice to do the following. Which looks a bit strange. What is this? double underscore name double underscore variable. 
And this is a built-in variable, a reserved one in Python. And to show you exactly the point of it, I'm going to add in a digital line here to print out what it is. And then I'm going to show you by importing the file in multiple situations. So here, name essentially will take on the value of main, like so, when it is run from the command line. There we go. So I'm running the script itself, and we're getting this. However, this isn't the only way that you might use a Python file. If we were to leap back to our IPython interpreter, one thing we can do is import the file into a Python script. So now I'm importing luminance.py as lm. So that means I can now access all of the functions that I have written within it, as well as anything that was imported. This, as you can imagine, is a powerful feature. And this is how packages are built up. We build up Python files with function definitions in them, and then import them into our scripts as whatever, and then we can access all of those files. However, when we do that, the Python file itself is actually executed. Any code that is here that is not part of a function will be executed. And if we have main just floating there, we don't want that to happen because we get a syntax error because the system arguments don't match up. So in this case, what we do is we make use of this variable, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. If we're running the Python file as a script, it will be equal to underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore. Uh, instead of saying all of these underscores, I'll call this what is commonly known as a dunder method, a double underscore, double underscore variable. So this is dunder main, this is dunder name. Right, so when we run this, uh, dunder name takes on the value of dunder main, but when we import it, it takes on the value of the name of the file that's been imported. So we have a nice way of distinguishing between how the files are being used, and as such, we can run main. It's quite a powerful tool. And as you can see, we're starting to use it to build up our file. So now, when I run luminance.py, we're getting the average luminance for a simulation. There we go. Okay, so at the moment, we're just doing this for one file. How can we expand our script to work for multiple files? Well, we can just do it with a small addition, a small change. Here, I have changed the script based on what we have in the notes. Now, we're finding the data cross-section in a function, calculating the average luminance, and then for main, we're saying that we're going to have file names, which is all of the inputs after luminance.py. And then we're iterating over all the file names and printing out the average luminance for each one. This is quite a nice way of doing it because it means that the previous method still works, but if we wanted to include simulation 02, we'd now get both. It's quite powerful. Okay, so let's try and add some command line flags. What's a command line flag, I hear you cry. Well, command line flag, you'll have seen this before if you've ever used the command line, are things like this. You add dash dash and then a value, or dash m, or dash t, or dash s, or something. These are known as flags. We're gonna to stick to the dash dash mean and dash dash std flags for now. These are mean and standard deviation. So ideally, we want to be able to write down here, we want to say, okay, I want the means of all of these files. So I'm gonna say dash dash mean simulation 01.hex simulation 02. And then if I want standard deviation, I would say dash dash std to say, okay, I want the standard deviation of these files. So how do we do that? Well, again, a little bit more complicated now. We have all of the same functions as before, except now we have a calculate STD luminance as well as a 
calculate average luminance. And now for main, what we also have is we are going to get the action, the flag, from the first argument after the file name. Following that, all of the file names are everything afterwards. We iterate over those, if we, and we say if the action is equal to dash dash mean, then we calculate the mean, otherwise calculate the standard deviation and print out the results. And otherwise, if we get something completely different to mean or STD, we're raising an error saying no valid action has been supplied. So let's have a look. Now that it's like this, if I just save this file and execute the code, we're now calculating the standard deviation for the simulations. If I change this to 02, we're doing it for simulation 1 and 2. If I change this to mean, we're now calculating the average luminance for each one. There you go. Slowly, the program becomes more complicated. OK, so for now, most of this is working fine, but our code is getting a little bit bloated and complicated. This main function is getting very large, so let's let's consider cutting it down and making it a little bit smaller. What we can do is build some of the functions together. So now what we've done is we've got find data cross section just as before, exactly the same. Now we have a calculate luminance stats function. It takes list of x parameters, x values, takes luminance for the equivalent x positions, and then the action itself. Do we want mean or a standard deviation? So what we're doing is now calculating this Boolean array, which we've spoken about before for indexing purposes, and then we can calculate the luminance, either the mean or the standard deviation, or raise a type error. So this calculates a statistic and then returns that value. Now in main, we have action to be the first value, file names to be everything following that. And then all we have to do is iterate for file name in file names and then calculate the statistic and print out the results, saying mean or standard deviation, luminance for, and then file name is equal to, and then the value with the unit. Fairly standard stuff. And we can just check that this is all working exactly as we intended by running the script, just as we did before. And you can see the result is just the same. OK, our code is a little bit tidier now. The next level we need to do is to add comparison to the experiment. Now, this, again, isn't particularly complicated, but it does require a bit more thinking. So we have the find data cross-section, just as it was before. We've now got a load experiment data function, which takes in an experiment file name and runs load text on that file name. And then we return the x and luminance values for the experiment. We have the calculate luminance stats, which conveniently will work with both experiment and simulation because the data is in the same format. And then for main, we now have two actions, action one and action two. The first value will always be action one and the second value will be action two. So if action two is equal to experiment, then we can get the experimental file name from the following uh, argument and then get the data from that. And then everything after that will be simulation file names. Otherwise, we're saying, OK, if no experiment was provided, then we set the file name to be empty and say everything following that is a file name. Then we can just iterate over as before. And if there was an experimental file name provided, so if this evaluates to true, we can calculate the experimental statistic as well, find the percentage difference, and print it to screen. So now, if I do Python luminance.py dash dash mean with the previous two files, we're still getting the results that we would expect. But if I were to say experiment 01.csv dash dash experiment dash dash uh, and 01.csv, now 
we're calculating the sim mean luminance for the simulation and then the percentage difference with the experiment and we're doing both. So with that we've built up this small script which can perform the analysis that we need it to to analyze this data and compare it to the experiment in a short and concise way. And as we run more simulations, we'll be able to build this up further. And it will be able to run and scale and it will work relatively well in building us a reasonable response to uh, the problem. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.